Good morning, good morning. Welcome to another edition of Macro Now, set to be released every Monday morning. Today is Monday, August 23rd, 2021. My name is Alexander Turo, Senior Market Strategist here at RGO Futures, where we contextualize the rates of change of growth and inflation, not only here domestically, but globally as well within the context of the prior week. So with that said, we'll start with the global currency market. Yeah, the counter trend bounce and a deflationary type of scare uh, in the currency space with the US dollar teetering on a tr potential transition in trend, uh, which comes in at about 93.40 or so. We had the US dollar index up 1.1% last week, uh, but has now since retraced. Uh, take a look at the Euro versus the US dollar. That was down minus 0.8% last week and continues to signal um, neutral on a trend duration. Uh, Japanese yen in kind was down 0.2% versus the US dollar, uh, but it's still up 0.1% in the last month as it continues to signal neutral trend as well. Uh, you had the Jer British pound versus the US dollar breaking uh, trend and transitioning now to bearish trend as it came off minus 1.8% last week. Uh, similarly, you had the Canadian dollar also breaking down in trend as it came off 2.4% last week. And lastly, the Aussie dollar versus the US dollar uh, broke down 3.2% on the week last week and down minus 8.3% the last three months as it continues to signal bearish on the 90 day trend duration. As part of this deflationary scare you had uh, in the uh, dollar moving higher, you did have commodities in kind deflate as well. Uh, the CRB index, came off minus 4.6% last week, but it's still hanging on to bullish uh, on a 90 day trend duration. Uh, if you take a look at some of the economic bellwethers in oil, uh, WTI, that closed down nearly 9% last week, minus 8.9%, uh, but it's still holding on to bullish trend, which comes in just around 60 and some change. Uh, <clears throat> That's on the back of oil volatility today coming off about 5% or so uh, as the market has uh, was signaling medium term oversold late last week. Otherwise, taking a look at copper, uh, that broke down as well, minus 5.9% last week and held on uh, to bullish trend as well. And then if you take a look at the ag space, um, the uh, corn, uh, that came off as well. Uh, closed down 6.3% last week and is also hanging on to bullish trend as well. So on the uh, up move on the dollar last week, you did have countries that are linked to China and or have uh, growth and inflation decelerating, albeit uh, not uh, as other parts of the world. Uh, they came off considerably. Take a look at emerging markets. Uh, the MS. CI equity index was down another 4.7% last week to now minus 8.2% in the last three months. Chinese stocks, the Shanghai comp was down another 2.5% as it continues to signal bearish on a 90 day trend duration. You take a look at the Hang Seng, that has now crashed uh, down minus 5.8% of the week and now down over 20% from its cycle peak. If you take a look at where that peaked back in Q1 of 2021. Japanese stocks, the Nikkei, uh, that was down another 3.5% last week um, as the Japanese economy continues to move into more of a deflationary type of environment. And then you take a look at the Kospi, is uh, teetering on a potential trend reversal as well. <clears throat> However, as far as uh, the potential deflationary type of scare, uh, and not so much be it um, the economic environment that which we're in, um, you take a look at U.S. Uh, utilities, um, those were up 1.8% and, and are up 6.8% in the last month alone, coming up to new cycle highs. Take a look at tech, uh, large caps, uh, those were up 0.5% uh, and up 3.5% and 13.7% in the last one and three months, respectively. Um, and you take a look at, just notably, in Q's, while there isn't a, as high of a Applied volatility premium, you are carrying a 54% applied volatility premium versus a 30 day realized currently. And lastly, take a look at gold now. It's up 0.3% last week, but down 1.7%. Uh, that is coming on the back of falling volatility. 
um, as it continues to try to get its bearings. But uh, on the other side of that, you take a look at you know being long small caps as a factor exposure. You know the RSL was down 2.5 percent in the last three months. So uh, keeping an eye on the dollar here it does have some strong uh, correlation risk uh, with uh, gold on a near-term basis, uh, minus 0.7 percent, and also in Brent of minus 0.82%. So that's what we're keeping an eye on here ahead of this week's economic data prints um, and new home sales, uh, PCE, um, and then uh, uh, durable goods, and most notably, of course, the Fed at the Jackson Hole Symposium. So uh, with that, that's all we have for today. If you have any questions or like to follow up, please feel free to reach out to me directly. Otherwise, thank you for listening and keep your head about there.